Why did hydrogen once seem like the perfect fuel for cars offering longer trips, quicker refills and clean energy? It was hailed as the savior of the auto industry, promising zero emissions except for water vapor. But why hasn't it dominated the market? What's next for the hydrogen cars? Stick around to discover the answers. Hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles are the same as those cars that use hydrogen instead of gasoline. They're clean because they just release water vapor. Hydrogen can be filled up into them as fast as you can fill a regular car with gas, and they can drive just as far on a full tank. The people really took the cars well because they are clean and still feel classic. George Bush Sr. was so into it that he promised to provide $1.3 billion so that the production of these cars increased. Tonight I'm proposing $1.2 billion in research funding. Although the Porsche 911 and the Lamborghini Miura were the ideal cars to own in 1965, the first hydrogen fuel cell car was not given much attention. Hydrogen cars have been around for a while, but they have just recently become a really popular alternative for regular cars and the transportation sector. They work by utilizing the pressurized hydrogen, which is the source of electricity for the fuel cells. These cars brag about being emission-free, with the only thing coming out of their tailpipes being water vapor. Sounds great, right? For instance, a quick comparison to electric cars, which can take a long time to charge. But then, why do hydrogen cars suddenly disappear from the public eye? What I mean is that there are a couple of reasons. To begin with, we should discuss the issue of price. Purchasing a car is a considerable expenditure, and the price is a crucial aspect. Right now, there are three hydrogen fuel cell vehicles on the market. The Toyota Mirai, the Hyundai Nexo, and the Hyundai Creta are some of the examples. The Toyota Mirai starts from $50,000, but with the rebates and financing, you can purchase it at $18,000. It appears to be a good deal, but what about the cost of refilling? Hydrogen fuel gas usually costs $16.5 for each kilogram, but a car requires about 5 to 6 kilograms to get filled up, which can be quite expensive. A full tank can give you a range of 400 miles, but it could be $80 or more, which is more expensive than other choices, such as hybrids. Another major obstacle is the fact that there are only 45 hydrogen refueling stations in the United States, and a single station may cost up to $2 million. And what is more, most of them have one pump only, so that it is difficult for companies to see a profit with such a small customer base. But there's a bit of good news for hydrogen car owners. Some manufacturers incentivize customers to purchase their product by offering fuel savings. In particular, Toyota offers $15,000 towards fuel costs. But the bad news is, you have to use the fuel within three years and after that, you're back to paying the high prices and limited refueling options. The California government subsidies as well as hydrogen car owners may be partly alleviated. Such subsidies are targeted at the construction of hydrogen stations, with a plan of having over 100 stations by the year 2025. On the other hand, hydrogen refueling stations are still much fewer than gas and EV charging stations in the US, so it is uncertain whether they will become ubiquitous. Calculating at $80 per each tank, it is a huge expense for hydrogen cars and the cost of building refueling stations doesn't look encouraging. Investment from private investors is unlikely to appear in these stations because of the high cost and low profitability unless the price of hydrogen is reduced. Countries like Germany, Japan and South Korea have their own hydrogen networks and they're not a promising alternative in the field of transportation. Moreover, energy and efficiency is another problem. Energy generated from wind turbines must be converted into hydrogen by means of multiple stages, with each stage having its own energy loss. For example, the energy is only retained at 75% during electrolysis to create hydrogen. Next, hydrogen must be compressed and moved to the car where it is converted into electricity to power the car. This process usually leads to some energy loss. This sophisticated process, known as the hydrogen vector transition, is the main reason why hydrogen vehicles are not efficient enough. Energy conversion process that is used to power hydrogen fuel cell vehicles leads to energy losses at every step. First is that the production and transportation of hydrogen consumes approximately half of the initial energy. Afterwards, when hydrogen is generated within the car and the electricity is produced from it, 40% of the energy is lost. Generally, the use of energy is about 38% efficient for driving a car. Unlike internal combustion engines, which are called ICE, electric vehicles are more efficient. 
They transfer the energy with only 15% loss of it during the process of moving the electricity from the source to the vehicle and using it to move the vehicle. This is therefore equivalent to the fact that electric vehicles are twice more efficient than hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in terms of energy usage. Furthermore, the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are powered by catalysts and costly materials. They require large quantities of raw materials which are so expensive, and their tanks have to be made from extremely strong materials to withstand high pressures of strong gas. Such tanks have to be routinely checked for safety reasons, as an explosion can result in a huge disaster. The above factors are the main causes of the difficulties and the high costs of hydrogen-powered vehicles. This is due to the fact that a fuel cell can store a limited amount of energy. That is about like 6 kilograms for a car, which means that the range is short, usually shorter than that of a BEV with equivalent performance. This is despite that many people who claim that hydrogen is light, so far the cars are heavier than their battery-powered counterparts and lack the space for anything really functional like four-wheel drive. Compared to a two-wheel drive FCEV, a four-wheel drive BEV is lighter and has more range. The fuel cell's problems, which are size, cost, and slow reaction, have limited its applicability. Cells that are powered with batteries need to be supported by fuel cells, and they don't work well in a cold environment. As of now, producing hydrogen during braking regeneration is not efficient. Hydrogen may have some benefits, such as cleaner emissions, but it is still a major source of carbon dioxide emissions, especially due to the inefficiency of production. The real climate benefits will not be observed until hydrogen is produced from renewable sources, but this can be achieved only after more capacity is built up. Hydrogen vehicles have the advantage of fast refill time, and if this is the case, refueling stations can be overcrowded. Batteries provide more advantages than combustion fuels as far as price and recharging efficiency are concerned. The electricity consumed by hydrogen vehicles is three times bigger than that of an electric one. Hydrogen's problems like storing it in hydrates or using alternative materials are solved, while the cost and inefficiency is increased. Others say that hydrogen is the fossil fuel industry's way to continue to be the central energy player. Electricity and batteries are more available, and their usage doesn't require new infrastructure except for charging sockets. Considering the mentioned points, it is not clear whether hydrogen cars will make a successful comeback soon or if the concept is problematic in its nature. What are your thoughts? Please share with us your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching.